Joining me now here on the MMA Report Podcast, Extra is a man that's going to be part of New England Fights 38 coming up on April the 27th. It is Raz Hilton who looks to get his fourth professional victory. Raz, man, I, I appreciate the time. Uh, you, you, you know, according to Tapology, your first amateur fight just uh, you know over three years ago. How, how would you describe your MMA journey to this point? Uh, it's really been a great learning experience. I mean, uh, ever since I started learning how to box a little bit with my dad when I was a kid, I've always been fascinating with, uh, with fighting in general. So, I mean, he never really would have wanted me to be a fighter, but he put a bug in and I never really let go. So it was just the next logical evolution of my learning was getting in there and testing it out in an environment that supports growth and change. So it's been a great learning experience. I've met a lot of great people and had a lot of fun doing it. Ultimately, what led you to MMA as opposed to uh, boxing? Uh, the variety and the options available. Um, don't get me wrong. I completely respect boxing as a sport, but the fact that there's so much focus on just the upper body and punches to the head and more frequently than not. I mean, we're all looking for the knockout shot, but MMA offered the opportunity to really open up and give us more of a realistic approach to one-on-one -on -one combat. I mean, as long as you play fair, you get to use all the same tools and figure out how to play a different kind of game that still beats the other guys. Uh, of course, heavyweight fighter, six foot six. Uh, what what do you what do you what do you see as the advantages of, of having that type of height in MMA? It definitely focuses things for both myself and my opponent. Uh, I've got a body type that speaks very blatantly of uh, what the advantages are and what the disadvantages are. So it really helps to focus the training and where there's fewer big people than there are small people. You need, uh, you need some sort of way to fine tune things as quick as possible. You know, it's, uh, there's not much of a learning curve before you start getting hurt by it. You mentioned a little earlier about, you know, how this is, you know, you, you've grown from this what, what, and, and the learning lessons that you've gotten from MMA. What, what would you say is the biggest lesson uh, to this point in your career that has really stuck with you? Uh, be humble. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, we've, uh, just a quick little aside here. We've recently had a guest instructor for jujitsu at the gym. Uh, Chris McBean is always my coach and Zach Adams has come down from guardian BJJ. And he has this fun way of putting it. The last time I was out the corner, uh, another one of our guys, Bryce Manford, he said, you know, you, you look around the dressing room and it's just a bunch of, fighters so you're in a room full of other people who dedicate their lives their soul their family their time into learning combat it when you're looking at a room full of that it reminds you that as much as the average person may not have our skill set when you get when you boil it down it, you show up to a fight card and it's a bunch of people who have dedicated their lives to combat. You're one person on a much uh, a much more dangerous pond, you know? You know, and was is 2018 kind of also kind of a, that lesson of being humble? I mean, you know, things didn't go the way you wanted in 2018? Uh, yes and no, not at all. I, uh, I was trying to change things up and, you know, like I said earlier, it's uh, it's kind of like, playing with a chemistry set for the first time, you get a bunch of ingredients and elements and chemicals in front of you and some you're familiar with and some you got to learn and tinker with before you can really hone down what it's going for. So uh, fortunately, I work with great people. Uh, my head coaches, John Rayo at First Class Fitness and MMA, Andy Campbell at Dragon Fire Martial Arts, who I just tested for uh, my Black Belt in Shotokan. I just got my second strike through him. It, they've gotten more familiar with me. I've gotten more familiar with what they're, what direction they're helping me in. And with all the 
coaches, senseis, teammates that I've got to work with, it it really has been one of the best, you know, mutually expansive moments of my life. It, it's been great. And, and you're taking on Charles here, who, who's making his, his pro debut. Um, what's your thoughts on yeah. Charles as an opponent? Uh, this has been probably the biggest question mark fight I've ever had. I mean, uh, at least with everybody who's come before, there's been some avenue of recent information. But, I mean, he did great in his amateur career, six and three. But his last fight was, what, 2013? So it, there's a big question mark. There, there's a big gap there where he could have gone in any direction. So it's kind of simplified things for me because now I get to just stick to my plan of using 2019 to do what I have to do to be the best fighter I can be. So I get to keep on that and I don't have the distraction of trying to figure out the other guy. It's, uh, it's really played towards my mental strengths to start off this year. When you have someone that, I mean, you're talking, you know, October 19, 2013 is the last fight that topology has for him. It, it, does that does it that didn't make the fight where like the first thirty seconds you're just trying to feel him out before maybe implementing what you want to do? I'm really just looking to feel my way into whatever good position presents itself, whether it's first five seconds or the first five minutes. It's going to be just feeling out whatever's available. So, uh, yes and no. I guess would be the simplest way to put it. Anything you want to prove to yourself in this fight? <laughs> execution. Uh, execution of the game plan is what I'm really looking to stick to from here on out. I want to take this as far as I can go. I want to go up as high as I can. and It's... Uh, I've been lucky with the support that I've got between my family and my gyms to be able to do something that really makes me feel whole. So, uh, yeah, I want to pay back that investment in full and with as much interest as possible as soon as possible. I'm in the 30s now. Got to make something happen, you know? Uh, Matt was telling me about how you have two nicknames. What's the preferred nickname? Uh, I personally don't have a preference. Um, Rass Watch tends to be the simpler one for most people, but I'll, I really like the Jamaican Shamrock, and a lot of us do. It's just uh, right around the same period of time, both of my gyms came up with two different nicknames, and I, I really can't choose. So, uh, you know, it depends on uh, what sticks in people's mind, but I like Squatch or Jam Sham. It all works for me. Uh, any cool uh, story about the origin of the nicknames? <laughs> well, uh, the uh, the Jamaican Shamrock just kind of came up due to my heritage, but the uh, I guess the funny one would be how uh, Rasquatch came up. Because, uh, well, I don't know if there's any copyright issues, but I'm assuming you know about the Jack Link's uh, Sasquatch commercials where I know Squatch or whatever, right? Correct, yeah. So <sighs> came up in conversation that, uh, as soon as I start getting real popular, Jack Links needs to uh, sponsor me and have me do their uh, Runner with Squatch commercials. Because, and then uh, my instructor, uh, Andy Campbell, <laughs> he turns, he just uh, out of the blue says to us, "Okay, that's it. That's your cage name, Rass Watch, because my first name is Rass and." I'm a big hairy guy, so it just kind of happened real organically, and it's been a running joke ever since that just stuck. And well, let's face it, uh, I love the imagery and a lot of the culture around the Squatch legend, anyway. So yeah, absolutely, it works on all levels. I love it. Awesome, awesome. But of course, the fight here is NEF 38 coming up April the 27th. Razman, really appreciate the time. Uh, where can everybody follow you at on, on the various social media channels and, of course, those sponsors that help support you? Uh, please definitely uh, give me a shout out on Facebook. You can look up my name, look up my fire page. It's Fast Glass of Jamaican Shamrock. 
There I am. Uh, Instagram at Raskwatch MMA and same Hilton at Ras on Twitter. Um, just starting up that again. And I really want to give a huge thanks to Portland Nutrition Corner. It's right on 85 Western Ave here in South Portland where I live. And it, any health advice in general, they've got the supplement, they've got the people. And I'm really glad that they've been so supportive of me and stuck with me ever since I started in my amateur career. So huge shout out. Thanks again to Chuck Martin there, uh, to my gyms, dragon fire, martial arts, first class fitness and MMA first class in Brunswick, uh, dragon fire, martial arts right here in South Portland. And if you're looking to fight or just learn martial arts or move, it's a great environment in either place. Just depends on your personal preference. And of course, I wouldn't be anywhere or anyone without my family. So thanks, Mom. Thanks to my sister, Janice, my wife and my family, my kids, uh, all everybody who I train with and who teaches me and whether that's student or instructor, I learn from everybody. So I uh, just want to be really express my gratitude and continue to make sure that I can pay off that investment. Thanks, guys. And thank you for having me on, Jason. I really appreciate it. Thanks, man.